The moment we've been waiting for. Gentlemen, start your engines. And 40 Grand National Stock Cars fire up. And we're getting close to the start of the 14th Daytona 500. On the pole, Bobby Isaac, veteran from Catawba, North Carolina, car number 71 to Dodge. Outside, front row, A.J. Foyt, Houston, Texas. In a Mercury, car number 21. In row two, Cuckoo Marlin in a Chevrolet, Bobby Allison, number 12 in a Chevrolet. Row three, Richard Brown in a Chevy, Charlie Glotzbach. And Charlie Glotzbach is driving a Dodge this year. Richard Brown, incidentally, a rookie in this race. Row four, you have Frank Warren and Jim Vandiver in 79 and 31. In row five, 56 is Jimmy Herdebees. And number 16 is Mark Donahue. Mark Donahue in his first NASCAR Grand National Stock Car Race ever. Back in row eight, Cale Yarborough returning to the NASCAR Oval here at Daytona. Cale Yarborough in car number three in row eight. You look way back in the pack. The two fellows we were talking about, Buddy Baker, Richard Petty, they are in row 16. And around them you have some veteran people, people like Benny Parsons back in row 17, James Hilton back in row 18, Elmo Langley and Henley Gray back in row 19. There are a lot of prominent names, Chris, back in the tail end of this pack. The economics of racing has put these fellows in a strange position for the 1972 Grand National season, Keith. And trailing the field behind the pace car and the racers, we have a camera wagon. Daryl Duringer is driving that wagon to give you some perspective of what it's like to go around the two and a half mile oval here at Daytona. Well, the car is entering the tri-oval area. There's this caution light and we're coming past the start finish line there. It's banked 18 degrees there and it's an easy turn but it's a very difficult one for the cars to negotiate because it's flat out. Notice the litter up against the guardrail next to the spectator area. This will blow up when the race gets underway. Now they enter the first turn. It's banked 31 degrees and it's flat rather than parabolic. It's only 45 feet across from the bottom of the apron to this concrete guardrail at the top. Very narrow one would think but very safe because when a car does get in trouble it's not part of that cement wall and therefore he just wraps it rather than crashes into it then the banking lets the car slide down and clear the track off the banking and onto this 3,300 foot long back stretch that is the fastest ride in American automobile racing today it's flat billiard table smooth and really fast and sheltered from side winds by the concrete guardrail but it is not sheltered from an east-west or a west-east wind which does affect the handling of the car Approaching now turn three, this will build to 31 degrees and the drivers have their choice of the low center or high grooves here. And here's where the bravura comes into effect. Remember, we're only going 90 miles an hour here, just about half as fast as the cars will be going when the race is underway. A little bit of a hump greets the cars as they come off this section of the turn over the tunnel that leads out from the infield of the track. It's down off the banking and onto the straightaway and just off to the left here is the entry to pit lane that cars will be visiting four times at least in the 500. And we're standing by for the start of the Daytona 500. We'll have it for you right after this. Gonna be fun to watch this twosome, Buddy Baker and Richard Petty. The red car, number 11, and the red and blue, 43, as they try to work their way through the pack. And hunt for the leaders off the start of the 14th Daytona 500 and sitting up in front. Car number 71, the red one, is Bobby Isaac, the pole sitter, qualified at better than 186 miles an hour. Alongside of him, A.J. Foyt and the black and white Mercury, qualified at right at 184 miles an hour. And right behind them, Bobby Allison, number 12, and Cuckoo Marlin, number 14. The field is made up of 1172 models, Keith, 1771s, and a dozen 1970s. And they're off. Now, let's watch the shuffle as they head for the first turn. Mark Donahue looking for a hole back there in the fifth row. A.J. Foyt in car number 21, moving at the top, comes down. He's got the lead off turn one. Isaac is second. Allison grabs third. Now they stretch it out on the back straight, and they have really reached racing speed now as Isaac in the red 71 Dodge comes up alongside of A.J. Foyt. And the charge has started by Richard Petty and Buddy Baker. And we will put an isolated camera on Richard Petty and track him for a while. And in a few minutes, when the lead is settled, we'll show you the drive that Richard Petty is putting on right now. In the meantime, the joust for the lead between Isaac, Foyt, and Allison. 
You know, there's no betting on auto races except who leads the first lap, and Hoyt led that one, and we'll bet some money changed hands down here in southern stock car country. Well, there's a lot of pockets around. There's about 100,000 people here to watch the Daytona 500. The temperature in the 50s, the sky clear, but it is quite cool. Now the Chevrolet is in second behind AJ. We've got a Mercury, a Chevrolet, a Dodge, and a Chevrolet in the top four positions, and Cuckoo Marlin back there in fourth. A politician from Tennessee and driving like it is an election year. <laughs> I think of all the people, though, that you could say were hungry for this race and probably has the equipment to make his stand is A.J. He has won here at Daytona before. He won the Firecracker 400 successively in 1964 and 65. But he has never been able to win this event. And this is one of the events that A.J. considers a crown jewel in automobile racing. Really dueling there with Bobby Allison. Meanwhile, Petty and Baker are coming through the field at an unprecedented rate. They're going to be up with the leaders before too long. A.J. Foyt, Bobby Allison, and Bobby Isaac in that order. They record for 500 miles here at Daytona, set by Leroy Yarborough in 1969 at 157.950 miles an hour. Richard Petty holds 11 speed marks, laps 100 through 198, but Leroy Yarborough holds the 500-mile speed record. Now, we told you we'd lock a camera on Richard Petty to give you an idea of the kind of a drive he is giving his Plymouth. Okay, let's now show you, starting early in the race, at the start of it, what Richard Petty has been able to do. Here's the start. Top center. Watch that red and blue car as we track him around. Right behind him, Keith, is Buddy Baker hanging right on his back bumper. Remember now, Petty is the boss and Baker is the contract driver. There he goes high on the track, up in the loose stuff. See the dust the car's churning up, the marbles, and he's pulling away now from Baker as he passes cars on the high side. You have to have a car that really handles to use that top groove, and you also have, a, have to have something in your heart to want to go up there, too. Now down the back stretch, he's really threading his way through. He's being squeezed against the wall here by this fellow. See him grazing it just ever so slightly. I was going to say, you've got to have spirit to stand on it that hard in that kind of traffic. Car number 43 is Richard Petty. He started back in row 16, and now he is in fourth spot. The leader is A.J. Foyt, car number 21. Bobby Allison jousting with him in car number 12. Bobby Isaac is running third. Richard Petty is now fourth, and Buddy Baker up in there challenging for fifth. Allison's the leader right now, Keith, but the first three are starting to pull away a little bit, and we wonder if Petty, without the benefit of a draft, is going to be able to move up on this leading trio. He is fourth, but he is not a close fourth. A.J. Ford slipping back into the lead. They've been swapping the lead between these three cars since the beginning. A.J. Ford, Bobby Allison, and Bobby Isaac. Bobby Isaac now leaving the swapping up front to Allison and Foyt, and content for the time being to run in third spot. Here comes Bobby, using the draft, goes back in front. The owners of these cars are both former drivers. Allison's owner, Junior Johnson, a former winner of the 500, and Foyt's owner, Glenn Wood, the next driver. As a matter of fact, Glenn Wood was very prominent back in the days when they used to run down on the hard sand of the beach. So your leader is Bobby Allison. A.J. Foyt is second. Bobby Isaac is third. Richard Petty fourth. We'll be back more of the Daytona 500 in a moment. We continue our coverage of the Daytona 500. The leader is A.J. Foyt, car number 21. Bobby Allison, car number 12, running right behind him. Change, however, behind them. Richard Petty is now running in third place. Buddy Baker is fourth, and Bobby Isaac, the pole sitter, right here, car number 71, has dropped back to fifth and is slowing down, dropping way off the pace. Tough break for the fastest qualifier. Daytona has been a difficult track for Isaac. And here's Petty and Baker coming high on the track, and we can see now how close they are to leaders A.J. Foyt and second place Bobby Allison. Of course, when you run this hard, this early in the race, it can be a problem, and we'll put a clock on the leader, A.J. Foyt, Give you an idea just how fast he's making it around this two and a half mile high bank oval speedway. The engines being used today are interesting, Keith. 
Detroit's Pure Lady Mercury has a Ford Boss 429 engine. The second place Coca-Cola Chevrolet, driven by Bobby Allison, has a 427 Porcupine engine. While the STP cars of Petty and Baker are using 426 Chrysler wedge engines. Uh, so a great variety of power plants are in use here, and all of them are running very fast and very well. And as you can see, AJ kind of out there all by himself right now as he continues to really streak in the Woods Brothers Mercury. Coming up toward the start-finish line, and the clock will stop as he crosses it at 49.3 seconds. That'll figure out to just a fraction under 183 miles an hour, and Bobby Isaacs in the pits. Now, when the hood is up, Keith, that means trouble. Tough break, as we said, for Isaac. So, tough day for Bobby Isaac, and Richard Petty and Buddy Baker have now passed Bobby Allison to take over second and third, and they'll set out to pursue A.J. Foyt, the leader. Tremendous pace is being set by Foyt, but Petty and Baker, by hooking up together in a draft, can make their cars go faster as a pair than they can by themselves, and that's why they're catching Foyt, who is out alone with no one to draft up front. We have four fellas out of the race. Ramo Stott, Bill Champion, Cecil Gordon, and Raymond Williams have dropped out of it. So we've got 36 running right now, and the leader is A.J. And we've got trouble on turn number four. Car number 30 is upside down. That's Walter Ballard's car. Buddy Baker also involved. Ballard's car coming to rest right side up. We hope he's okay. Walter Ballard from Texas, the rookie last year, and he looks as though he's climbing out. Buddy Baker was involved in that one too, Pete. Only two cars, everybody else still going. Two cars involved. Ballard running there, going across Pitt Road. There is no fire, but Walter wanted to get away from it in case there was. Buddy Baker is also out of his car and apparently all right, but both machines obviously are out of the race. There's Buddy's number 11, and he's got to be angry because he felt he had a car that could run with anybody. There he is behind it, Keith. He looks okay, but of course, very disappointed. Tough break for a contender to be knocked out of this 500 so early. Here's Ballard. He's from Houston. That's A.J. Foyt's hometown. And his wife is his car owner. Obviously, the yellow flag is out. Let's take another look at what happened. Here's Ballard. Pins Baker against the wall. And then he goes over Baker's car, does a slow rollover, and comes down on the windshield and radiator of the car and slides down the track, rotating slowly about 200 to 250 yards as Baker's car goes into the grass and hits the fence. Now, as Ballard's car comes off the smooth pavement on the grass, it hooks the grass and does two side-over-side -side rolls as it throws parts off the car. There goes the windshield. Remember now, the drivers are encased in a roll cage and strapped in to protect themselves from injury. And here's Baker with that disappointed look on his face. You know, it's incredible, though, looking at Walter Ballard's car that a man could walk away from it. We'll be back and try to talk to the two men involved after this. Hey, Walter? Yes. You all right? Yeah, fine. Oh, well, must have been a pretty exciting moment, though. Yeah, I guess this is probably the worst ride I've ever taken. Do you have any idea really what caused it, Walter? Yes, I, I had moved down because I'd seen Richard and Buddy coming up on me, and I'd moved down and let them have room. When I came out of the corner, there was a car. must have been running 30, 40 miles an hour there. But I was hoping that Buddy was back far enough that when I moved over to miss that car that I didn't take him. When I knew what I when moved over, I got him. But I didn't have any choice. I either rammed that car right into square and in the back end, which I felt like I had a better chance going to the right. That pretty lady holding that hand awful tight. Looks terribly relieved. It's kind of nice to have that hand, isn't it? It sure is. <laughs> good luck to you, Walter. Thank you. It's good to see that Walter is OK. We can't say that for his car. That was once a 71 Ford racing stock car. The damage, however, primarily confined to the body, the sheet metal. $10,000 worth. His seven kids will help him fix it. Thank you. You all right, bud? Yeah, well, uh, as well as is possible with a $40,000 race car torn up. It's just one of those things. Uh, one of the slower cars was down in the bottom lane, and I guess he was passing somebody or, or something, and all of a sudden there he was right on top of me, and uh, I was in the fourth lane up there trying to avoid him, but I couldn't get, get it slowed up. We just collided right coming off the corner, and that's saying him turning no, end over end down the racetrack. I'm just glad that he wasn't hurt. But you are all right then, just... Yeah, just a little uh, disappointed because I was running real easy and I think it would have been an easy race to win, but 
What can you say? That's just one of those things that happen in racing, I guess. You're a great one. We'll see you again. Thank you. The yellow flag's still out. Obviously, it's going to take a little while to clean up the track. The field has bunched up. That means that Richard Petty has closed behind the leader, A.J. Fort. Mark Donahue has also gone out with a bad engine in his matador. We'll be back here later. Right now, let's join Jim McKay for International Professional Skiing Championship at Point Mountain in Michigan. Thank you, Jim, and we've got ourselves a car race here at the Daytona 500. A.J. Foyt in the white Mercury, number 21. Richard Petty in the red and blue Plymouth, car number 43. And Petty hanging on. Looks like he's about ready to take a run at A.J. Foyt. Under the yellow flag, when you, we left you to go skiing at Point Mountain in Michigan, he had closed behind A.J. And now on the back straight, Richard's taking a run at him. He had his draft going. He may get him. Going into turn number three. Foyt and Petty, hump to hump, and Petty has the lead. 1959 on this very track, the day it opened, that Richard Petty discovered drafting. He was the first man to find out about it and the first man to put it to practical use, and he's been doing it for 14 Februarys here at Daytona. He's won this race three times. Running in third place right now, you have Cale Yarborough, who is the other winner here at Daytona. He is well back, as you can see, right there in white car number three. You know, it's been a tough race mechanically for these hundred and some miles, Keith. Eleven cars are out of it. Nine for mechanical reasons and two for the crash. Red Farmer, the national sportsman champion, is fallen by the wayside. Jimmy Finger and Buddy Arrington are out of it. And here's one driver who's having mechanical trouble right now. Bobby Allison noticed the patch on his windshield. He caught a piece of flying debris and it starred the windshield. It's been taped up. Now, coming down for the pits is Cale Yarborough. Mark Donahue's car, the Matador, retired with valve trouble. We'll be back with more from Daytona in a moment. This is Keith Jackson along with Chris Economaki. You're watching the Daytona 500 on ABC's Wide World of Sports. And the leader, Richard Petty in red and blue. Of course, he used to drive an all petty blue car, but now there's some red on it since he tied the knot with Andy Granatelli. In second place, A.J. Foyt. Richard Petty due for a pit stop, and we've been waiting and watching for him. And now as he's backed off, the pace and is slowing down. Obviously, he is headed for pits. And as far as we can tell, Chris, this will be a routine stop for him. Routine stops here at Daytona Beach involve a tank full of gas up to 22 gallons and usually two tires outside or inside, depending on the turn. Now, there's five men allowed over the wall. There's A.J. Point on the back stretch. He can come around to the start-finish line before Richard gets out. Why, he'll have the lead. The other men over the five are tire technicians checking the wear on the tires. They're really not doing too well. At 15 seconds, the car is still up and Foyt comes around to turn four. He's going to snare the lead this time. Gasoline spilling out of the left rear corner of the car. And this is a slow pit stop. Very slow. And it's going to give Foyt the lead. So Penny loses the lead in the pits this time. Of course, we saw Cale Yarborough spend over a minute in the pits a little while ago, and that cost him third place, dropped him well back in the crowd. A.J. Foyt, the tough Texan, is in the lead, and incidentally, you'll see a special feature on ABC's Championship Auto Racing Sunday, one tough Texan, A.J. Foyt at Phoenix. I think you'll enjoy the story of A.J., 5.30 Eastern, 4.30 Central, 5 Pacific Time, Sunday, ABC's Championship Auto racing. That's tomorrow. Just before the start of today's race, Chris Economaki talked with AJ, noting the fact that AJ had run second in one of the qualifying races. Well, AJ, the big one is here, but you got out run in the qualifying race. You think you can pick up the speed necessary to win the one today? Well, Chris, uh, it's another day and another race. Uh, we're not going into the race uh, to get beat, uh, so we're just going to have to wait and see. I think our chances are real good. You're starting up front. How will you drive the race? Will you try to lead it, or will you let someone else set the pace? Uh, I'm going to try to lead it as much as I can today uh, and go the distance, uh, mainly flat out all day long. Those comments just moments before they fired the engines for the start, and that's Jimmy Herdebees, and he's got some sheet metal flapping. Herdebees is the only driver in the race that was a veteran of the old beach course, and here A.J. now slowing down, heading for the pits, and let's see how the Wood Brothers does in servicing the Mercury. Of course, it's easy to remember the work of the Woods Brothers if you've ever seen them, for example. Now, Ford giving the indication of some of the things he wants done, but I can never forget the first pit stop today when they took him in, put him out on the track in 17 flat. Let's put a clock on it and see how they do in this one. 
Notice the jack is under the middle of the car, and by jacking it up, it lifts both the right side wheels. These men have, at work have been likened to ballerinas. Remember, they did a 17-second pit stop earlier. Uh-oh, 18.4, and there'll be some locker room talk about who did some sloppy work on this one. I'm sure there will be. Meantime, Richard Petty running up there at the top of the screen has regained the lead from A.J. Foyt. So it's Petty, Foyt, and we'll continue from Daytona right after this. As we continue our coverage of the Daytona 500, let's set the leaders for you. Richard Petty, car number 43, is in front. A.J. Foyt, car number 21, is second. Jim Vandiver, car number 31, is third. Bill Dennis, car number 90, is fourth. Charlie Glotzbach, car number six, has moved up. And Jim Hilton, James Hilton, car number 48. Dennis won a sportsman race here yesterday and is having a big weekend. If he can keep that number 90 going, he'll have some prize money to take back to Richmond, Virginia. There is the pursuer, A.J. Foyt. There is the leader, Richard Petty. And Petty is slowing down. Richard Petty is slowing down. He is not due for a pit stop. So let's watch as he comes around the corner and see what's happened to Richard Petty, the leader. There's smoke under the car. He's in trouble. A.J. Ford's going to come around and take the lead, and Petty may be through. He may be through. Smoke boiling up in the car and coming out the back, and that color smoke, Chris, usually means engine trouble. But here's the tip. He's turning into the garage area. He's not going to his pit. He is out of it. So Richard Petty, who had made such a dramatic charge from way back in the back to lead the race, and almost 100,000 people come up with the news that Richard is out of it. A.J. Ford leads it. Jim Herdebees is still running with that sheet of metal flapping on the left side of the car. The left front fender is loose. Foyt is running these drivers into the ground. There goes another engine. Herdebees has just lost an engine, and Foyt is right behind him. There's all sorts of stuff and goo coming out of there. He's spinning in his own oil on the track, and there goes Foyt by. But nobody else spins behind him. Oftentimes, when uh, you drop an engine, you drop oil on the track, and everybody makes it through there, but it does bring out the yellow flag. There's Herdebees in that smoking car. It was a wild ride for the veteran driver. As I said earlier, he's the only veteran of the sand on the track today. So Herc's all right, comes out, gives it a little kick. He's out of the race. Richard Petty behind the pit wall, changed his clothes, wiped off. Let's find out what happened. Same old question, Richard, what happened? Well, I think it dropped the valve about halfway down the back stretch. It started skipping, I just brought it in. You haven't had much, a whole lot of luck the last week, have you? No, it just looked like it, this whole uh, month really has been sort of a bad omen on us. Uh, coming down here, we lost a trailer, wheel off a trailer, and had a hard time getting through inspection, and uh, then we had trouble in 125 mile races, so uh, really wasn't a whole lot we didn't expect. You're gonna get Andy looking over his shoulder, you know that. Might have paint that thing blue all over to get it to go again. Yeah. Richard, good luck to you down the road. Thank you. It's been a long time, Keith, since Richard Petty has been 0 for 2 at Daytona. And here comes Foyt into pit lane. He's pointing to his windshield, and he apparently caught a good dose of the oil coming out of her to be his car. Well, Chris, he's sort of at the point now. If this turns out to be a routine quick pit stop, just to clean off the windshield and get some visibility for him, of course, while he's there, they'll give him more fuel, and they'll change that right side rubber. But he's kind of in a position now where he can cool it. Well, this is a quick pit stop, but it's not routine. It's unscheduled, and it's upset they're thinking about how many stops he's going to make in the 500. But they're working hard, and that oil is sticky stuff. Three men on it. Uh, getting that windshield clean, and away he drags. The yellow is still out. It'll be quite a while before they can get all the oil swapped off the back straight where Jim Herdebees dropped his engine. We'll be back here at Daytona later. Right now, let's rejoin Jim McKay, Boyne Mountain, Michigan, for more international professional skiing with a slalom competition coming up. All right, Jim, thank you. And we are headed, as they say, downhill. A.J. Ford with two laps to go. The information passed from the Wood Brothers pit. And if he can keep it going, he's going to go home with $38,400. Running in second place right now is Charlie Glotzbach, Jim Vandiver, Benny Parsons, James Hilton, Cale Yarborough, all still running. Some of the favorites to reflect back on what has happened. Richard Petty out with a blown engine. 
Mark Donahue out with engine trouble. Bobby Allison looks like he's going to finish, but he's running for a, with a very sick engine and has been for about 200 miles. Buddy Baker, of course, wrecked, and Bobby Isaac went out early with ignition trouble. Keith, this is the beginning of NASCAR's big Grand National season. There's a 500-lap race in Richmond, Virginia tomorrow, and then the California 500 at the Ontario Motor Speedway in California on March the 5th, and the Carolina 500 comes up at Rockingham, North Carolina, on March the 12th. And the white flag is up for A.J. Foyt, and he has been out in front, running easy by himself for... 119 consecutive laps. So he has really dominated this race since Richard Petty blew his engine and went to the garage. The clocks say that he's going to win at better than 160 miles an hour, Keith. He'll be the first over 160 mile an hour winner at 161.5 miles an hour going in. The old record set by Leroy Yarbrough, 157.95 in 1969. So this massive crowd, and they've estimated it at 98,000 plus, coming up with the cheers for the tough Texan from Houston, A.J. Ford. He told us before the race he wanted to run it hard, lead all the way if he could, and he hasn't led all the way, but most of the way, and he wins the Daytona 500, and that's an appropriate sign, isn't it? Well, the jubilation goes on with the Woods brothers. Charlie Glotzbach of Georgetown, Indiana, will finish in second place. Jim Vandiver, Charlotte, North Carolina, third. Benny Parsons, Elevate, North Carolina, fourth. James Hilton, Inman, South Carolina, finishes fifth. And Cale Yarborough of Timmonsville, South Carolina, comes in in sixth place. 19 of the 40 starters still running, Pete. So the entire pit crew jumps on. Car number 21, A.J. Foyt's winning mount as they head for Victory Circle and to pick up money. $38,400, and A.J. has won the stock car race that he's always wanted to win, the Daytona 500. Now this is Keith Jackson along with Chris Economaki saying so long from Daytona International Speedway in Florida.